so excited that Kathy is hanging out in the chat because Kathy this was your pick so hopefully we do this one justice tonight is the fame episode I've had this song stuck in my head for like weeks at this point now yeah 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 we're just gonna spend pretty the next hour singing yeah pretty much always and then of course Dane being like, Dane was like what song and I was like the fame song and he had no idea what I'm talking about it's like nope no nope, no clue yeah. Fame. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like, don't. You put don't. it in Google, and the first thing that comes up is Fame, the movie from 1980. Yeah. You just have to type Fame into your search bar, and it takes you to the movie. It's not even like you're typing the word in. You know? I wish I, I wish I could just like sing it at Google. I'm all like Fame. I'm gonna live. I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take it down. I gotta take it down a bit. I'm not Val. I've got, I've got to take it down a bit. Well, hi to Kathy. Hi to Paul hanging out with us, uh, and all of the the taters. The taters. If you were like wait a sec, who are these other people? I don't see them on screen or hear them in my headphones. That's because we have a live studio audience. We record this show live most Thursdays, 9 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. So you can always swing on over, join us. This is where we get our movie recommendations. So you can be special like Kathy and give your movie recommendation to us. Tell us what to watch. <laughs> Tell us what to watch. This was another one. Get ready to be uh, disappointed in me as a person. This was another one that I... I don't know if I've seen all the way through. You've seen or if parts. I, or if I've just seen parts or if I just like am so caught up in the lore. But I really feel like, so I, I watched it today. I was like right down to the wire. I just finished it. <laughs> but I feel like I watched it with really fresh eyes. So my perspectives are coming in yeah. hot tonight. We're we're ready. We're ready for, uh, for diving Katie, in. Katie, Katie messaged me and you're like, I'm just finishing the movie. I'm not sure I've seen this all the way through before. I'm like, <laughs> me too. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I meant to be clear. I'm just finishing it <laughs> yeah. now. To be clear, I've seen it about a dozen plus times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I I know this by heart. Yeah. And I also, though, this and the TV show, and I know it's not as, the TV show is definitely not as, um, how should I put it, heavy. Yeah content wise plot story wise it does have its moments but it is more lighthearted. yeah um though it, it's very much the tv show is basically the movie and it's uh, a huge chunk of the same cast mm -hmm. and debbie allen i forgot and because i've watched the show and the movie so much in my life <laughs> that I forgot how little debbie allen was that in was me she was basically literally in the intro yeah. and i'm like but she's the teacher, the one that helps Leroy. And I was like, oh, no, the white lady helps Leroy in this one. Yeah, okay, no, yeah. I kept I kept pausing it. And I was like, that's not Debbie Allen. Where's Debbie Allen? <laughs> I just kept having it. The one yeah. at the beginning in the yeah. court. Oh, I know now. Sweater. Yeah. Oh, and, she, yeah. and Leroy's doing his little dance moves. And she's like, oh. And the, the other straight lace teacher is like, what's that? She's like, hot. <laughs> I'm like, Yes, ma'am. Yes, correct. Debbie Allen knows what she's talking about. Uh, all right. Well, Kathy has seen this one over 300 times. So Kathy, pipe yeah. in and let us know uh, what, what we're missing in this review. All right, Nat, are you ready to give us <laughs> the breakdown on, so on what ready. this movie is about? Hint, it's not really about fame. That's kind of, it's, well, it, it's really more about well, failure. Arguably, or like, yeah, arguably so. it's about the different types of fame mm. that people dream of. The longing for fame. To. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, take it away. I'm so, excited. It starts with 
um, it's auditions day. So this is sort of like a Juilliard type school, but, but high more school. at a high school level. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah cause Juilliard, but Juilliard does have prep school. I which looked is it up, but I couldn't like find the it. Last year of high school. This, uh, I this one, on oh, there you go. I can send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> that will I'm fact like, I'm check sure you. they take children <laughs> under yeah. like not college age. But this, one, yeah. this school is so actually they, based on a real have. school in New York City that is yeah. like open and available. So it's not a private school. Uh, this is anyone that anyone that wants to audition can technically get open into audition. this school. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Now. So the movie starts with audition days and it is very much an open audition it's like do you have your form filled out go right ahead here's your number yep and they audition the the students the prospective students audition for dance acting and music Mm -hmm. and various forms of it and we sort of get to see this cast of characters we see some bomb in the auditions and some do really well and then we it's freshman years and the movie's broken up in auditions freshman year sophomore and senior year so, and that's how we see the characters kind of grow and interact. And we have a few musicians, a few dancers, and a few actors at slash comedians. And we see them interact. And like Katie was saying, this school is like open to everybody. It's not like um, an Ivy League school. It's not, it's not a private school. You kids don't pay necessarily. for it. Yep. It's not private. Yeah. So... So you see kids from all different walks of life. You see like low income to one percenters and everything in between. Mm -hmm. So it gives you an interesting cast of characters and different dynamics and different backgrounds. Um, And it's just basically these kids figuring out while they're at this school, what it is they're actually there for, what they hope to accomplish. They find their identity. They Mm -hmm. find their their artistry they kind of hone their artistry and then you just hope at the end of it that they can take what they've learned and do what they want with it and we do see some characters as the new kids are coming in like the senior like ooh, the dream boat who's graduating this year and you see he's totally flamed out you know he went out to california he did a couple movie pilots couple auditions and now he's a waiter back in new york mm-hmm. you know hoping he'll get a callback for that thing that he auditioned for an off off broadway so that's basically it um our characters we have coco who is played by irene cara fantastic who also does um the soundtrack and the title song and a couple of other songs in this she's phenomenal Mm -hmm. and i'm still i'm still i'm jumping ahead here i'm still mad at coco why didn't you just walk out why didn't you just okay coco oh my god I still cry at that. Okay. Yeah. Then we I, have that was uh, Leroy who goes in <laughs> uh, the Coco scene. Yeah, yeah. That was still so hard to watch. Mm. Um, Leroy who goes in with his friend to audition. They're local. They're kind of like street kids. They He goes in to audition with his friend who wants to become a dancer and he's supposed to be her dance partner. But obviously she's she's got big hopes and big dreams but no talent and Leroy is nothing but talent he is like a god-given gift to dance yeah he's um and, like remarkable to watch oh my god he's he's my favorite character <laughs> and also in the show who's played mm-hmm. by the same actor both I love 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 and then we have Montgomery who I know this is the one that I can't get over because you see a lot of these people and they're all recognizable now a lot of them are all pretty famous actors singers dancers choreographers etc um montgomery this very very white boy with this very red fro um he's dr romano the complete asshole doctor from er the one that was basically on the full (laughs) the full beginning to end of er and he was like the biggest bell end okay like like you barely had sympathy when the medevac chopper like had a problem and chopped off Romano's arm and you're like eh, he kind of deserved it you know so to see that character and then to recognize him as the soft squish beautiful Montgomery I still can't and his he has a song that is so 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 precious and so sad then we have Doris, who 
is a good actor, but she feels she's not special enough. She's like mm-hmm. an Irish Jew. She looks Irish. She has a very Jewish mother who's also a very intrusive stage mom, mm-hmm. uh, very middle class, very, you know, like she struggles. And then you have this Puerto Rican kid who is a comedian. He's Ralph. He's obsessed with being sort of the next Freddie Prince not junior senior he was super famous Mm -hmm. super famous at the time and he's hoping to be that kind of puerto rican to be that kind of like hit that puerto rican american dream yeah and um is that all is that the main that's the main we have poor we have poor lisa who was just why was she there I don't know. Like, and I like, she's part like of me- all I ever wanted to be was a dancer, except I haven't tried in a single class. Yeah. Part of me is like, I feel bad because she's being like openly berated in class. And then the other part of me is like, but you're also she's like terrible. talking and not trying and not all that good. I, I need to say before I forget to say later. Yeah, that she didn't give a shit about class. What I loved about the music classes um, and I, I will say this in particular for the music teacher and not, but also oh, the- Bruno. Your yeah. God, Bruno. Oh, right, and Bruno, My yeah. autistic little synth wonder. Yeah. He's autistic. We can say that now because we recognize it. But, like, he's <laughs> heavy on the spectrum. <laughs> like, I'm like, is he being an absolute dick? Yes, he's a talented musician. He doesn't want to be at this school. He has no social skills. It's beyond his capability. I'm like, aw, our little autistic genius. Yeah. <laughs> I love him. I mean, but he's yeah. a dick. Yeah. But I love him. <laughs> Yeah. I Sorry, gonna, you were saying. I was going to say, I absolutely love, in particular, the music teacher, although the other teachers oh are equally God. brilliant. But I, I was just like marveling at the things that, like, you cannot say anymore in school. It was like, <laughs> like the things the music teacher says, where he's like, he was like, you know, uh, he was like, hold don't hold your bow, your yeah, violin bow. Don't hold your violin bow like you're holding your dick. And then he was like, oh, I'm sorry, to the woman next to him. <laughs> I was just like, oh, all right, we're just going to. It was just like absolutely fantastic. Or the like, I don't know. I mean, or they even the even the English teacher. I mean, all like all of the teachers are just like very, very no nonsense. And I, I what I what I read a lot of, so I read a lot of um, kind of facts and, and information about the making of this movie and kind of the, the vision behind it. And what I thought was really interesting is that this movie is absolutely like a, a vignette. It's like this perfectly captured moment in time, moment yes. in the time of life of, of the main characters. And like, and it is, I love that they called it fame. They went back and forth on a number of different names as most movies do. But I, uh, but there was a, a fact that we we played at the beginning before uh, we jumped on saying that the the team behind it like wanted to call it fame because really it's it's more about like reaching for fame and the how kind of and the disillusionment of it right like and how much actual failure there is in it like this is yeah. not a fun experience for any of these kids like they are doing no. they are doing basic level high school which is already painful and horrible enough. Plus, that's the side gig. Yeah, the side, that's the gig, side gig is like, actual school. Yeah, plus all of the like all of the pressure on top of it, and these teachers like as much as I just joke about like how inappropriate they are in today's standards. Like these teachers are do not care about their feelings about whether or not they like they're having an off day. Like you, you're in it or you're out. Then there are other people waiting for you, and the the level of kind of what real life, life <laughs> this is like yeah. is um I don't know it's just interesting I just kept thinking to myself when I was typing up the description for this episode I was like it's like a it's it's like a high school musical from the 80s I was like only like not high school musical like not at all high school musical <laughs> it's just definitely it's... a different a different feeling yeah and Paul Paul has the quote yeah. here exactly so uh, Alan Parker commented that the film's title is essentially ironic the story is about really about failure both personal and professional the chasing of dreams and the cruel reality of show business yeah I mean th- yeah you know, there it is for it's me just... for me the scene that stuck out and tied it to the title the most was when Bruno and Coco so Coco decides like she sees there's a lunchroom breakout day dance musical number of course as there is yeah and she realizes hey bruno's really talented because he just picked up on all the the noise in Mm -hmm. the lunchroom and made it into a song which made everybody join in she's like yeah i'm gonna attach 
myself to him because we will become famous. She's like, I can sing. I'll do the band management. I'll do the costume design. He's like, oh my God, you are talking Thank you. to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <No problem. laughs> Again, our autistic king. Like, I love yeah. it. And um, so, but later there's a scene where they're walking home after like a band practice because they do end up teaming up together. And she's like, she's describing her school experience and basically she's like i don't care if you know i'm recognized for my singing my dancing my acting whatever as long as i'm famous and he's like i don't care if anybody ever hears my music as long as i get to create it yeah so to me it's those two aspects of artistry mm -hmm. and fame that kind of tied it in for me but yeah and coco does so we'll talk about that briefly because it's sad but yeah so she does do anything to become famous. Some guy comes up to her in a diner, sleazy, sleazy guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, hey, I recognize you. And she just plays along with it because she's 16. And she's just like, yeah, I was on that Broadway show. I was in a chorus line. Of course I was. Yes, you recognize me. He's like, come, I take headshots. We could do an audition. I know people. And she falls for it. And it's the, you know, the age old trope of just a perv trying to get some nudie shots. Um etc and and in it instead of she knows when she gets to the apartment she knows it's wrong she still goes up to the door still knocks on the door he kind of charms her in and she's like no you can see it on her face she knows it's wrong and she still does it and then he's like oh don't worry the audition it'll be quick it'll be easy he's like you can light up the camera like marilyn monroe you can you know mm -hmm. like not everybody has that he makes her feel special she obviously knows something is still wrong and he's like take your blouse off and I'm like, I would have just been like, I'm 14. And it would have been, you know, <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, then. maybe not. Yeah. You know, jail time, but maybe not. But, you know, it's a good, like, first defense mechanism. No, she does it. And she just cries the whole time. And she does it. I'm like, oh, my God, just get up and walk out. Just get it. I, I know. It was the kid thinking, just get up and walk out. <laughs> it so was. Sad. Um, oh, I mean, there were a lot. There were lots of moments in this movie oh, that gorgeous. were hard to watch, but I think that one was probably the the most difficult to watch because, as you said, you, the entire time you're just sort of sitting there thinking, "Oh my gosh, it's like you." Not that it's like I mean, yes, get up and get up and walk out, but you can also see, just like you know how how badly she just wants to to be famous, to be famous and to and yeah. to not even to be like to be successful and to and to feel accomplished and to win like there's even that moment earlier in the movie where she uh you know she gets a she gets a ride um home it's not, not actually her house and she says that she's staying with her sister and and you know no need to like wait for her to go in and whatever and she you know she immediately as the car disappears you know veers off somewhere else like these None of these high school kids are have not that any high school kid has like has it easy, but certainly no. like you, as you follow each one of their stories, it's all like it covers, you know, very, very deep uh, topics that are all really upsetting and disturbing as you yeah. think about it. I mean, you know, dealing dealing with all all kinds of things from, you know, socioeconomic difficulties to, you know, um, gender identity to you know to just yeah again like just really parent abandonment for several of these kids yeah parent abandonment or like or the Inherent opposite side where the parents are like so involved that you're just like just you know go away and leave us like <laughs> leaving us alone when bruno's dad who shows up for bruno all the time and he's his biggest fan and his biggest champion and he you know, you see Bruno kind of finally has a sort of like lucid in the moment moment when Coco is singing at the piano and he's like, hey, that's really good. And it looks like they're about to have a moment. But Bruno's dad is in like the dark shadows of the auditorium. Like, woo, yay. And it's like you couldn't let your son have one normal moment as a teenager. Yeah. After complaining that he never leaves the basement and has no friends and doesn't date. <laughs> like, way to yeah. go, dad. It's uh it yeah it's it's hard um and so roy's hanging out with us so shout out to roy thanks for hanging out with us tonight roy asks does did this movie age well it did. i that's a that's actually a really great question I, like so i would argue so nat says it did i would actually argue that it doesn't need to it, it's like this absolutely perfect moment in time like it really felt like a vignette to me it like i feel like the challenges that are discussed in this movie unfortunately 
are, are still, still very the same. Much the are still very much the same. And I don't even just mean like dealing, like I mean like dealing with trying to navigate like your passions and your dreams and who you want to be and what that means and how hard it is to yeah. like to just the high school experience to again like all different kinds of like being sort of being forced into this and that and I were talking about this before we jumped on but this idea of like a, a melt like a melting pot like it, it's not really though because they're all coming at it from all these different perspectives and it they're not from different backgrounds and places like there's there are different various levels of challenges that are not the same it's not that they're you know, one is harder than the other per se, but, they, but they're different. They're, you know, they're certainly yeah, going I mean, through different you see, things. You see like the extremely wealthy, like Upper East Side girl mm -hmm. who, who is arguably the best dancer. Yeah, and she's, she's actually phenomenal. a famous Antonia. Oh goodness. What's her name? She's actually a very famous choreographer as well now. Mm. Um, but she played the sort of prissy French dancer mm -hmm. Um, and she has like everything on a silver platter, but she gets knocked up and mm -hmm. she's like, and she has this whole moment where she's having a meltdown checking in to a clinic and she's just like, I want it to dance like, you know, um, Cinderella, like several times before I was 21. I want it to have all the lead roles. I want it to be Giselle, which is a famous ballet. And she mm -hmm. lists all these different sort of ballet lead lead like prima ballerina roles that she wanted and you could see she could definitely have it but she has a teen pregnancy and even if she aborts the baby you know that that's like that's not going to be something you can just get over and get back to dancing you know? like that whole thing is possibly derailing her whole plan her whole life so it's like even at different levels like Leroy we find out is illiterate and he can't read and nobody notices mm-hmm like well, the whole time he's there, nobody notices until he goes to find his teacher and yell at her. But thank you, Paul. It's Antonia from <laughs> Kathy. There was a tie. <laughs> they yes, were both coming Kathy. in. <laughs> yeah. like, I got Antonia. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, nice. I was like, I. There was so. We will say like this. There is. There are documentaries on this movie. Like this movie is oh, so God. big that we're we're just going to share our our feelings in this, but we are definitely not going to get. Yeah, we could do university dissertations on this. Like, actually, there <laughs> yeah. are university level written yeah. dissertations and research projects on yeah. this. This <laughs> is actually a really good point that Kathy has, uh, which I think is like super important to talk about. Th so this movie is very heavy. And thankfully, uh, like, at least in my opinion, thankfully, the the team who created this film and all the actors and everyone involved with it didn't shy away or back down from any of it. And it was like... Un, like a lot of what they talked about at like at the time I mean even now was not done like it so what they did I think is really special and I think that's why remakes and even the tv show to some level although you know certainly Nat and I both love the tv show but even like n nothing is going to live quite up to it because it really again was one of these like boundary pushing like just again a, like a, a snapshot into a world that not everyone sees and again a pretty realistic one like this is based on Very a real realistic. school in new york city and this is based on like you know what what that experience is for a, for a lot of different people um i also want to point out that uh and paul quoted this thanks paul for <laughs> helping me with my facts but montgomery mcneil was an uh, was an out and well-adjusted gay character which again like yeah. unprecedented in 1980 i mean in many cases not even all as common as it should be in 2024 so i it uh, it is it is a pretty remarkable movie, and I think that's why so many yeah. times where you have in a, in a day and an age because, of remakes, I don't think a remake yeah. would do it justice because it just would always fall short because it it can't it can't push the limits in the same way that it would the first time you see this, right? So, yeah, I mean, there's also like Ralph or Rico who, you know, he's hiding his ethnicity, he's hiding mm -hmm. his Puerto Ricanness. Uh, to like he changes his name from Rico to from, Ralph. Yeah, you know, uh, Ra Ra Raul you know? Garcia. He goes from Raul Garcia Raul, Raul. to um yeah. to Ralph Garcia. Yeah, and yeah. but then you see like his home life, and he has two younger sisters, and we find out it's three younger sisters, and 
like for most of the movie you're like where are the parents is he the parent like oh my god like what's happening and then we find out it's like the mom is always at church because she's praying to find another husband to take care of them mm -hmm. the the little sister who's five gets attacked by a junkie in their apartment building yeah. because there wasn't an adult there and he's like doing a school project he's uh, and also falling in love but he's he's trying to do something that it's the only thing he thinks he has is how funny he is that's mm -hmm. all he thinks he's worth and he puts everything into it to help provide and save his family mm -hmm. but at the same time they still get hurt he still has to suffer through it he still gets a big break at a stand-up nightclub so now he's doing school full-time basically raising his sisters full time and doing this stand up and trying to network and schmooze in that, you know, group and that crowd. And then, and then knowing that like saying in the movie, he has to fight off the junkies from coming into his home. He has to fight off um, the drug addicts that live in their apartment building, the, like the junkie that like harmed his five-year-old sister and and then he we find out that he gets hooked on drugs and it's just you're like literally nobody else knows better and it still happened and it's so sad yeah but he, he has a good support like we see him in montgomery have a really good moment and uh, it really helps him so we hope it goes on the upswing um the nightclub owner was um dun 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 uh law and order oh my god <laughs> I saw them, you like, can no, tell no, that no. I'm not like a Law and Order girly. I'm just like, oh, what theme song is that? <laughs> what is Natalie talking about? Um, dear Lord, what's his name? Um, there he goes. Everyone in the chat can scream at you. Well, while, while we're thinking about it, I want to put know. this question up on screen because I didn't, I didn't necessarily read it this way. But um, Kathy and Paul are asking or chatting about what's everyone's take. Did we think that Ralph was in fact gay too, uh, or? Which I, I feel like, I feel like I had, sorry, say the name, Richard. Richard Belzer. Richard Belzer. Oh, yeah. No, I recognize that name. Yeah. yeah, you would recognize him with sort of salt and peppery hair and glasses, not like the long mop of dark locks. You know? Yeah. yeah. There you go. First non- <laughs> First non munch appearance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't know. I, I think I had moments where I wondered, again, because I don't think I actually watched this all the way through originally. I had yeah. moments where I wondered- if he was going to be gay, but then I also was like, I, I'm a total relationship geek. So like, I was just like, but he's in love with like, but he, you know, he's in love with Doris. Right. And then I was so caught up in like his family and like his, his kind of obsession with trying to like emulate his, his hero. And so I guess I, I, I wasn't paying as close attention. I definitely had moments where I, I thought it might go that way, but I don't know if I, I early in the movie maybe like that's why he picked on Montgomery so much but yeah. then but then fairly quickly I was like I think Ralph is just comfortable in his sexuality and doesn't care one way or the other yeah I mean in that yeah I think he just be. picked on Montgomery and Doris um because he didn't have any other close friends they were easy targets and it was meant to be funny at the time yeah and also, like, he talks... That everybody laughed at, you know, like... He does talk a ton about, uh, you know, it's even part of his bit about kind of this idea of friendship. And I think for, yeah, for him, it's like he doesn't have... I mean, not that he doesn't have a family, but, like, this is, like, his su support system as well. So I think a lot of times that, yeah, that... um Those roles change. I Paul, I think you're right. I do think, you know, it, yeah, it potentially exactly could it. have been, yeah... Our I was first like, I don't think to a person. Yeah. yeah, he I does think... make a joke about having a threesome with Dolores mm -hmm. Montgomery before they actually become friends, and I was like, I could see that for Ralph. <laughs> <You know>? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I don't. I think he was just very fluid. I don't think he he cared. I think he was just comfortable being himself. Which yeah, comfortable having like a support really system and explored or labeled at the time. Yeah. Like it didn't necessarily have a name at the time. So I could see his character. I just took, especially when I was younger, I just took that as face value. I was like, cool, cool. Rough, solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was just like, he's not questioning anything. He just doesn't care one way or the other. Like, he's, yeah. just, he's just in it, you know? But, uh, we need yeah. to talk. We need to talk for a second about, about Rocky Horror, of which we both absolutely oh. love. 
So this, first so, of all, this that's scene. what it really is like yeah. in mm-hmm. real life when you see it in Montreal at the Rialto Theater. Yep. And Not- I... <laughs> yeah we we went to a very disastrous salem uh salem massachusetts rocky horror which did We're not the only ones that brought toast yeah which did not uh turn out the way that it does in this movie but the that particular scene so i guess as they were working trying to think through like doris's character and how they were going to you know evolve her character and and you know give her this this moment where it's freeing and she can you know kind of finally sort of be herself and figure out like what she wants to be yeah figure it all out so being a character not becoming a character yeah exactly so herself doesn't need to be a character she plays the characters it's that aha light bulb moment for her (laughs) and so uh so i guess they they found and discovered this like this local rocky horror um group that was doing you know doing these uh these Rocky Horror Nights. And so they actually hired a bunch of the actors from from <laughs> they like from the oh, Rocky God. Horror group to be in uh in yeah. fame, which I think is fantastic. And those showing people didn't learn to do that makeup for the movie. They do that makeup period. <laughs> like, yeah. those, those people wore their own clothes. Exactly. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and showing, um, as as Kathy says, this was her introduction to Rocky Horror Picture Show. I think showing showing that on screen was actually like created this huge resurgence in like in the popularity of Rocky Horror, in people wanting to go out and have these kinds of like shared experiences in their cities and towns. So I I just thought I don't know it was it was a special moment, partially because I love that movie, partially because I just think that there's something like really magical like, and fr- I, like i was in doris's mind at that face. yeah the look on doris's face when like she hears the crowd and they're like kick it kick it it's like show them your mother and everybody's screaming the bits which yeah. when we went people were quoting the movie instead of screaming the back and forth part that's yeah. not scripted but we all should like we all know it right guys like, <laughs> we should hopefully hopefully we're we know horrified yeah. we're horrified anyways it was a, it was it was still a fun experience because I feel like most of the people at our in real life Rocky Horror experience were the virgins. Yeah, it was wild to me. But uh, yeah, when when the music starts, the time warp, and that look on her face, I'm like, yep, that's exactly the feeling. That's exactly mm-hmm. what happened to all of us that saw it for the first time. <laughs> like, yes, which we'll have to do that one for um, Halloween. Yeah, no, definitely that one's that one's still high on the list, but. <laughs> But yeah, I loved, I don't know, I think that was probably my favorite scene in this movie just because I feel, I don't know, I was just so captivated by, again, like, I, this movie is just for me, like, snapshots of, like, moments and memories. And even though, like, thankfully, I can't actually relate to most of the experiences that these that these teenagers are going through. I had a very sheltered childhood. And, like, I, I'm grateful and, and thankful for the experience that I had. <laughs> but I just, like, the the there's something about this movie that just really captures these moments in a really visceral way. Like, you, I just felt in that moment I could, like, I know what that experience feels like. I could, like, really put myself in Doris's shoes and I was just like oh like I just there's just something like magical about those experiences especially seeing them or experiencing them for the first time so I um I love it and Paul's saying he could understand why his cousin was making him take stuff to the movie it is it is if you've never done the 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 Rocky Horror experience and I don't just mean watching the movie I mean like going confetti experiencing it actual real bread toast yeah because when there's the wedding toast you're supposed to throw slices of it's Actually, a lot of fun. It's most a lot of fun. theaters really, really hate when you do that because it is so gross because you also have water guns for when it's raining. Yeah. Um, the best advice my dad ever gave me was don't sit under a balcony at the Rialto <laughs> when you go to the Rocky Horror. Yeah. Not, it's not always a water gun. Mm-hmm. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, um, you're right. There's a lot of moments in this movie that really you can feel like yeah even when so montgomery ralph and doris go to montgomery's apartment Mm -hmm. to practice for a play that they're going to be in for school yeah and 
there's a moment where Ralph and Dolores are cast as the the love interests and they kiss. And poor Montgomery is sitting there totally out of the loop. Like, like guys, you're not, there's a whole like dialogue here before you kiss. You're not supposed to kiss yet, guys. Oh, oh, I will leave my apartment and let that happen. It's like that moment where it's, it happens. And it's yeah. just, it was such a real moment where he's just like, this is my place, but I guess I'll leave. <laughs> you know? yeah. Oh, and um oh the dance classes oh the, i just the Dear the God. music and the dancing in this i sent it a note to nat when the movie was like first starting i like it's so funny because i like i i am a theater kid i grew up in the theater i am not musical or coordinated whatsoever i cannot sing and dance Katie was an actress. I was, she, an act- I was an actress. She um, actually really was. She was super good, guys. And uh, she she keeps telling me, no, 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 it was just fun. I'm like, no, she was actually really freaking good. Well, thank you. But what? I but I watching <laughs> watching this, there was like the early on in the movie where you know post post audition where um, Bruno is playing music and they're all in the cafeteria and they're they're like singing and dancing and the it was almost like this like visceral reaction where it was just like the like chaos but the talent and the like the it was like almost and I know um if Doc is watching Doc hates when I say the word overwhelmed but like my my senses were just like on overload I was like I just need to pause this for a second like it was so brilliantly done with like the the sound and the movement and just the chaos of the scene but it was it was yeah it was overwhelming right. to my senses like that's how my well done it was COVID brain can't handle stuff like that like i can't even handle ventilation in like a high-rise building anymore because i'll vomit and fall over that cafeteria scene it was so visceral i was just like oh god just get yeah. through it because the good part's coming yeah like, which okay we have to talk about speaking of the dancing the most iconic breakout dance sequence in a movie of all time mm-hmm. Bruno's dad is a cab driver. <laughs> yeah. And he pulls up with these speakers, like mm-hmm. like homemade like sound system on his cab, and he yep. pops in his kid's tape cassette. Without permission. Bruno, which, which is whatever so, his which dad is was. Kind of the worst. Like, yeah. Like I could imagine, like Bruno was like, Dad, I didn't yeah. want anybody to hear it. And like the whole fucking New York City is broken out into dance. I yeah. think your dad was right, Bruno. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but oh my God, there was this one dancer in it who was wearing um, this shoes, this beautiful black woman with braids in a high ponytail <laughs> and a red like basketball jersey like mesh jersey over like a crop top whatever Mm -hmm. and she's just doing high kicks like high kick high kick high kick on the top of a car okay in the middle of the road Mm -hmm. and i'm like is that jenny jackson i'm like i rewounded a few times and it's just you don't get a clear like you see her face it's it's not not but janet jackson is in the tv show so oh well i was like i'm pretty sure it's janet jackson because she was she's also like a stupidly phenomenal dancer yeah. just if, if you guys yeah, don't the, remember rhythm nation <laughs> the, ta- the talent in this movie so the God. the the movement the sound and the poetry and in many cases it actually is poetry but the the poetry and the i don't know lyricism is that a word the 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 cadence of the dialogue in this movie is just yep. so brilliantly done. Like the dialogue is so well written and so well acted that even just that alone would be phenomenal. Yep. But then on top of that, the way they move through the scenes. Yeah, the movement of all of it is dance. phenomenal. Um, there's sort of like a, almost an oscillation to how it's moving. Like it's like a a, a chorus line, like a group choreography mm-hmm. as they move through different scenes in the school, mm-hmm. especially audition. It's that whole thing is just a massive choreography. Yeah. And then the way they use the music to emphasize, especially in the high emotional moments, like mm-hmm. high stress moments or very emotional moments, breaking points, the music gets louder and louder and louder and builds and builds and builds. And it's different kinds of music. It could be somebody singing, somebody on the piano, somebody playing the violin. It's it's different throughout the movie, but they really use exactly the art that the students are learning to also portray the emotional turmoil of like, mm-hmm being 16 in high school and and an artist because it's just so yeah so layered yeah the the audition scene for the dance 
I I had only gone to one. I used to dance. I'm monstrously too tall for a ballerina. <laughs> Shocker. I was like 5'8 at like, what, 12? So, yeah. you know, like, um, and most dancers, because, you know, you have to have a line. Like, there is a chorus line. So there, there is, most dancers are quite short because also the men are quite short. And regardless of your height, it's all based on the prima. So the prima ballerina, the head of the, the company, like, it depends on her height and everybody else is cast around her. Mm -hmm. So there are tall dancers, but it's super rare. Um, so I went to one audition. I was too tall to be a rat. I didn't have my point shoes yet because I was too little, except I should have been a sugar plum fairy. Needless to say, the process, the audition process is like that, even when you're 11. Mm -hmm. Like it's, and there's no amount, it doesn't matter how good you are. You don't know what you're going into. It doesn't matter who tells you what you're going into. It doesn't matter how well they describe it. It doesn't matter that your parents will show you the scene from this movie. You're not ready. <laughs> you go in and your heart is like, da 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 because nobody tells you what happened. They just give you a number. You have on your leotard, it's definitely not as nice as anybody else's. Your shoes are super ratty because, you know, your parents aren't super rich like everybody else's are. And, and then you go through this thing and they just call it next group. And it's like, you just pick up the choreographer, choreography and the, and, Legit, the teacher's just like, and you're going to do a ba, ba, ta, 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 one, two, three. And you're like, that's nothing. You said sounds. <laughs> and <laughs> and you just do it. Yeah. And it's so it's like seeing like seeing them stress. And one girl, I think it was Lisa, who was like, oh, man, I've tried every diet in the whole world and nothing happens. Sometimes you're just your glands are just the problem. And I'm like, that is a fact. <laughs> like, yeah. Sometimes your hormones are actually the problem, even if you do everything right. You got it right, Lisa. <laughs> but I was just like, man, imagine you're that young and you're that stressed about your weight before you even got into a professional dance school. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. The, <laughs> that is a huge problem in dance school, but. The pressure all the way through. So we should, we, well, hang on. We got it. We got to say, so Kathy's pointing out something that you talk about often, Nat, that she, that there was a, there was a postscript about what happened to the actors, but no one seems to remember it. This happens to us all the time, Kathy, where we remember or like the movie being totally different and we just swear that they'd change it once they release it later. <laughs> so we believe you. We 100% believe you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I remember it. I think because I have this on. Um, yeah, I feel like it. On I have it on Betamax. Ooh, taking us way back to the Betamax club. <laughs> you know, that's watchable nowadays. Sure. Um, <laughs> sure. I had a Betamax player, but um, yeah, so I do remember that as well, where it's like, and so-and-so went on too, and... Yeah, yeah, I feel like it, yeah, it should have, it should have had that. My Amazon version, because I did not own this one, was... Uh, did not have that. So, <laughs> and Paul wants to know if you were the six six foot three girl that had the locker next to him. <laughs> yeah, basically. basically. No, I'm yeah. only five eight, which, mm. like, I don't. She just think got it's there tall. real fast. <laughs> Ballet, it's tall. You know, yeah. I was a string bean when I was a kid. But, um, yeah. no, when most dancers are five two to five four, it's no like five right. eight is like. You know, I go up on point shoes and everybody else is down, like, down there. You're like, oh, you're cut. <laughs> <laughs> the tall one? There's the door. Yeah. Uh, well, we, should... we don't care how good you are. You just don't. The line, guys. The line. <laughs> uh, we need to talk about Leroy because uh, we think we've covered everyone else's story. But his is, I feel like, in some cases, the most heartbreaking. I don't know. I like it. I guess maybe from... not the most heartbreaking, but it's just so... Yeah. I, sad I, like it's just so it sad it is because it's like and i forgot again like debbie allen gets into it with him in the show because mm. it's the same actor in the show and it's the same leroy the same dancing oh my god um but they don't really notice he's illiterate until their senior year like nobody he kind of just gets away with not doing the homework but he realizes his english teacher is likely to fail him and he gets invited to go to the Alvin Ali dance troupe, which is my favorite dance troupe of all time. When I was little, I was telling Katie this. I always dreamed that I would be able to dance with them, not realizing it's You're very not particularly black <laughs> dance troupe. <Yeah. laughs> um, and it's just they had the best choreography. They still have the best choreography. They have the best contemporary dance. They have the coolest classes on the roster. The I like uh so when he even when i was little and he says that i'm like well she has to pass him <laughs> my 
mom's like, calm down. Like, it's just <laughs> moving. <I'm> like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, it kills me that he goes home and he's like, literally lives on the streets. Nobody notices. Yeah. And like, they, like, Ralph also lives in abject poverty, but like, mm. nobody notices that no, Leroy, because it... he's quiet. He comes in, he does the dance, he has the swagger, he has that it factor. Um, yeah, there is. Just, he's treated like a god at school and gets away with murder, treated like horribly on the streets. And oh, that disconnect every moment. I'm just like, I just want to give him a hug. Well, and it, it. <laughs> There's this absolutely heartbreaking moment all the way around, really, where yeah. he, it, you mentioned some of it, but he, it's the sort of the nearing the end of the movie. He's had this like battle with this teach with his English teacher all the way through. She's very much like, she's the English teacher at like <laughs> a school filled with, you know, at performing arts students. So she's if like, you, you don't read, you're not getting anywhere. Yeah, if you don't read, you're not getting anywhere. You're like, you have to pass this class or well, you'll fail out. Right. So it's, you, you need to get through this class. Right. And she's ignored him and she's, she's having this like really terrible moment. The entire time I'm like, is her husband dead? Like it, cause it's bad. Yeah, it's he's clearly in the hospital like, dying or dead. Yeah. yeah that's so and she's, Leroy is just like, you can't fail me, miss. And he gets mad at her. Right. Yeah. Ugh. He flips out, but he says this, and like for the first moment, I was just like, oh, my gosh, like give give this moment. I like thought first he would come in and they would have this like beautiful moment. And they they sort of do in like a different kind of way. But it, but the beginning of it, you know, they're they're at each other and they're yelling. But what he says in that moment is just heartbreaking because it's so true. And yet there's like no fix for it like like there I'm sure there is yeah. but it just you feel so helpless like where he basically says and I, he says it beautifully I'm gonna butcher this retelling of it but he basically says you know like you don't know what it's like you like you basically you allowed me to come into this to this school because I am talented and like you know and you've given me every single opportunity but I don't have every single opportunity <laughs> like I'm like stuck in between these two worlds and you all did this to me like I don't like I don't now fit in at home I don't fit in here I can't, like I'm trapped I'm completely trapped and I but I'm you know but I I deserve to be here yeah exactly and it's like he doesn't say that, but you hear that. Yeah. In it. Oh, it's but a total cry nobody, for help. Yeah. Like even the teacher, she realizes like, oh shit, there's more to this than he just doesn't want to do his homework. Yeah. Like yeah. she hands him at one point, she hands him a fellow to read. Yeah. And it was kind of, it was a funny moment because he's always like, I'm black. I don't need to talk white. And, you know, that's kind of his defense mechanism instead of just being like, hey, I literally don't know how to read. You know, like. Yeah. Um, so his defense mechanism is like, that's not where I'm from. I don't need that. I like, that's not going to serve me in my real life. So she's like, read Othello. He's black, which was kind of funny, but it was so I'm like, he, but he can't like you give him Shakespeare and he can't read. <laughs> like, yeah. She, like, oh I will God. say like, I, uh, I spent a lot of time yelling at her because there are some like really incredible teachers out there. I've had the, you know, the pleasure yeah. of being around a lot of them and continue He's to be around a lot of them. Trying she, just didn't pick up on it. There is no way though that like, I feel like that is kind of the one character that's like not like, I think it worked for the story, but it's like not quite as believable. I was like, there is no way that a teacher who here. works in like in Manhattan with like clearly a really wide range of students from all kinds of socioeconomic backgrounds. Like she would have known that he was having problems reading. Like you, like teachers, teachers know that. Like it's just, I feel like she, she would have and should have helped him or like made more of an effort. And instead she's kind of very, she's, she's sort of like flippant with him, which I mean, I get it. He's being a pain, but yeah. Into She thinks the approach to get to him is to challenge him in a way that he would find interesting, but it wasn't right. And yeah. yeah, they do do his, like they do justice for his character in the show where it's much more delved into and he's very much the yeah. main character in the show and Coco is less so um, because it's not Irene Cara, though it is one of my favorite actresses, uh, Erica Kimball. I love her. Mm -hmm. And she picks up Irene Cara's role as Coco in the show. Yeah, yeah. Paul says that he has uh, Gina Anthony Ray, Lee. Like, eerily, she looks like Irene Cara. Mm, <laughs> but, 
it's kind of it's so strange because it's like at the same time period these two women like look very very similar in some instances it's kind of uncanny yeah but yeah um well this is a cool fact paul so paul mentions that in in um in 2023, this movie was selected for the preservation of the National Film Registry because the Library of Congress deemed it culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, which is, I, I could not possibly agree more. And this is my favorite fact, Kathy, so you beat me to it. So, Faith, the entire time watching this movie, I was just like, I need to go buy leg warmers. Why don't I? So, I like, I owned leg warmers for a little bit, but they weren't in like a fun color. I like, I had like a, navy dark you know, dark navy blue and i was like mm, i kind of want like hot pink leg warmers like genuine dance leg warmers are not what we think of when we yeah. look up on amazon 80s costume parties leg warmers it's not yeah. that yeah like that whole slouchy vibe thing no like they're actually tight fitted over your calf yeah yeah and they're just they're what really which is like what i to up your ankle <laughs> yeah which is like what i want to wear i i'm not again not a dancer no coordination whatsoever so but from a from an aesthetic standpoint i like i would like for them to stay up and not slouch down, not slouch down but yeah it is funny that flash dance i think gets like kind of all of the eyes on it for that look but it kathy's absolutely right that this this movie actually started that for the right reasons since it's entirely a, a dance like focused movie York started that like that's yeah. just I mean, yes, the movie, like, I guess, popularized it, but I'm like, that's just New York dancers. Like, the whole the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, we really need to bring back this New York 80s ballet aesthetic to streetwear. Like, let's yeah. just... Yeah. I want... And ballet sweaters, like, the sweaters that sort of cross over, because mm -hmm. they were open and they had, like, a tie. They were knit yeah. sweaters. And it's just when between numbers so you don't your muscles don't cool down you had like a, a a knit sweater that you would wrap and that's what the leg warmers again so your muscles don't cool down um between numbers while you're practicing because yeah, you've got to be sweating <laughs> we learned that from this movie lisa where's the sweat <laughs> i'm like lisa's <laughs> here for the goss like yeah. she's not here to oh man oh uh, yeah love. kathy also apparently bumped into leroy in new york city <gasps> oh i know oh and, my he, God. and he wasn't in the best shape i know it's so it's hard this it's heartbreaking this I this episode's gonna make me cry <laughs> yeah um yeah. Val, Val, I, we send photos of your leg warmers to make us feel better after doing this episode we'd like to see you in your leg warmers Val. send a music video of you we want to see you singing in your leg warmers this is you know <laughs> these are goals these are goals to make your us best feel better. irene cara which i'm sure yes I'm oh my gosh <laughs> oh, my oh gosh. man i could so we could there are so many things about this movie there are so many themes so many topics so many like we could do a ten part series just on okay. just on fame. <laughs> this is why excellent choice, got Kathy. <laughs> added to the cultural, historical yeah. whatever blah 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 association. Uh, yeah. Oh, and, you know, you guys, yes. I, you're beating Another us to one. all of the awesome facts. So yeah, the the fame fashion designer <laughs> Isaac. Ms. Rahi at age 18 was one of the students. He was an actual student of the school at the time. Yep. The uh, the school that, that this movie is like representing was apparently not overjoyed <laughs> with this movie, which I guess is not overly surprising. In particular, they didn't like the like swearing and nudity and pushing the boundaries and, and kind of all that. Yeah, and drug use and whatever else, which the, the team behind it, so the the producers and the director of this movie basically fought back and were like, well, that's what's happening in your hallways. <laughs> so like we can <laughs> pretend, but so it was, it was interesting. They actually filmed this entire movie at a completely different school. And fun fact, they made it look like it was actually a, a like pretty new building. So they actually had to make it look like older and grittier <laughs> to, for the vibe of it. Derelict. It looked <laughs> derelict. I was like, are they okay? They're in like a real, oh, it was like New York of the 80s. <laughs> I was like, wow, yeah. The 80s yeah. New York is a rough part of town. <laughs> yeah. Although I did. So I was, I was watching this movie today. Um, and I have, as many of you know, little kids. And so I had, I uh, had it paused because I was running, doing some other things. And I had paused it on this, like, actually, like, really beautiful <laughs> picture um, of a couple of the actors, like, walking in Times Square. And it was just, like, this really, like, beautiful picture. And my daughter walked in and she was like, oh, it's New York. And then at the top, it's, it said fame. And then in brackets, 1980, the movie's made. And she was like, she was like, was that in 1980? That looks like New York today. I was like, well, A, 
you don't know what New York looks like today. And B, and B it was just like, this is, I was like, she, she, she has not been to New York City. But, um, but she wasn't, she actually wasn't like all that far off. Like it, not, it but... did kind of capture this perfect moment where oh. I was just like, of all of the scenes to pause on, like this one did not look kind of as, as like gritty as some of the, the school yeah. scenes. But yeah. Um, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, we could dive super super deep in but we only have four minutes left in the episode so we should say let us know how many potatoes or stars or whatever rating system you want to apply to this one um yeah let us know what you thought it was been so fun hearing everyone's kind of feedback i love that kathy has like all these moments and stories connected with this movie which i I think is awesome we're jealous (laughs) we're jealous of your big city life yeah i have to say and I keep talking about the TV show, and I know it's not the same. Watch it's the like show, they, though. Yeah, it's the it's for the dancing and and the, anyways, and it's for Leroy. Really, it's for Leroy and Debbie. It's entirely it's, for I Leroy want, and Debbie. I, I like I did entirely watch it for Leroy to see more dancing, mm-hmm. and there was they delivered. There's this one. So when the teacher in the movie gives him Othello to read, they have a little throwback to that in the show. I believe mm-hmm. in season two. Where they put on Othello, but it's a musical. And he sings this song, Desdemona. Oh. That song lives rent-free in my head every day, guys. <laughs> every day I hear Leroy singing Desdemona. Da 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 da. Jazz hands. Jazz <laughs> like hands. Oh my god. Jazz it's so good and so stupid. I don't think I have ever laughed so hard seeing something in my life. And I'm not laughing to make fun of it, even though it was probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's because I love it so much. I love it so much. Anyways, it's on YouTube. Look up uh Fame Desdemona. It is gold guys <laughs> yeah. we'll have to redirect this one over to that, to that just so yeah. that you can really yeah, yeah, like... fully appreciate it well <laughs> kathy gives it a lot yeah. of potatoes so i can't even count that All many and, and really updated to unlimited but infinity amount of potatoes <laughs> paul gives it a lot of dancers um again too many too many to count i screwed <laughs> up you guys because i was updating this quickly because as i said i was watching the movie right up until the last second so um I we we gave it five, but I only put four. But allow me to update on the fly. <laughs> One second. Live update. Five potatoes. Live update. Five potatoes. You know what? We'll do six. We'll do six. We're you know it, what? We're gonna get. Go, we're gonna go with six. Potatoes in the middle just mean it's like infinite potatoes. In, yeah, enthusiastic. In, these once potatoes, these potatoes in the middle are, of the screen. Yeah, they're the enthusiastic infinite potatoes. Potatoes. There's the infinite. Oh. Oh, because oh, yes, not. You gotta go hang out with Kathy. Yeah, you gotta go hang out with Kathy and listen to all the <laughs> listen to all the music. God, I love that song. What oh am I doing gosh. after we log off? Watching that. I know. I you have, know what? I have it on DVD. The show. It was released on DVD. <laughs> I have this. I've seen it so many times. Oh my gosh. The the problem <laughs> with this show and watching these movies is that the second that I'm done, ones that I love, like this one. I just yeah. want to watch all of the other things in this world. So like now, yeah, now yeah, I want to yeah. watch like all the TV show, but then I also really now want to watch, like I want to watch Footloose. I want to watch Dirty Dancing. Like now I'm like, I'm in like dance mode or I'm like, dance mode. I'm in dance mode. And I know first before we oh, do dance mode, we have, we still we have to watch. What do we say? That Ruthless People is next week. We can, we can, we, you know what? Bet's not going anywhere. I always, I always we do this to you though, Nat. You're not. like this movie, and I'm like, get and it. Now I'm so excited about dancing. <laughs> like, I like no, but Dirty oh, Dancing, man. you guys, or Footloose, or like, oh. or all of them. I just everything. I love it. Uh, Kathy's get, Kathy's jumping into the TV show next. I, Absolutely, please do. If this was a TV show you know, podcast, we would be in there. I, but. I've tried looking this up many moons ago so the internet wasn't then what it is now so i'm going to look it up again but in the show there's there's danny i'm going to call him armadillo because that's a joke they make in the movie his name's not Ar- <laughs> danny armadillo it's danny amatulo if i'm i'm remembering from decades ago guys mm-hmm. struggle bus um but he does so one of i think it's in the first episode they do a breakout dance scene of course and he does the sprinkler okay mm-hmm. And I'm like, is this the first time that we saw the sprinkler? Is this what popularized the sprinkler? Right, it might be. 
1982 is this where it's come from it might be it might be somebody tell me the history of the sprinkler dance move <laughs> <laughs> but i saw it and i was watching it with our friend dan um big fabulous dan and we legitimately paused it and zoomed in on danny armadillo because we were cackling we're like is that the goddamn sprinkler it was oh, oh my god the, you're the like show enhance, so much joy. enhance yeah enhance <laughs> Well, back then it was like zoom ten times on your like on your clicker converter yeah. converter dubre dubre <laughs> what's what's it called a uh, channel changer um, channel changer controller yeah. controller I don't know what, what what were you just saying dubre what is that <laughs> <Dubry>. word <laughs> from from the 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 British comedy Miranda oh. made in two thousand five mm, the mother a... calls the channel changer the converter the the yeah, that's I, an what amazing the heck show. Talk? Controller. She yeah. calls it a dubri, and anyways, I've been saying that since 2005, guys. There you go. <laughs> Call it a dubri. <laughs> I I have not seen Idolmaker. Have you seen Idolmaker, Nat? That's I want to say yes. All right, we'll have to add that one to the list. Yeah. We'll I had high list. hopes for the remake of the movie Clicker. That's what I actually call it, but yeah, I've been calling clicker. it a dubri. Yeah. A clicker. Thank you, Kathy. I, I think I officially <laughs> called a remote control, but I but nickname also called the clicker. clicker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a dubri now. Now you guys won't be able to not say it. Yeah, Miranda is pretty is a fantastic um, show if you're looking for a good, a good watch. That's uh The that's remake a of one. the movie had high hopes because some of like it was cast with dancers more so than just actors mm -hmm. it was a lot of like the kids from so you think you can dance mm, i love so you think you and can dance. and they were especially then it was quite the talented pool of people to pull from mm -hmm. and it was not good mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like even the it. dancing i was like oh i don't and the remake of footloose i was like Ugh. i will be i'm gonna be uh <laughs> controversial and just say i don't I don't like remakes. Like very rarely is there one that even comes close to living up to my expectations. And especially if I loved the original, then like I don't I don't want to watch a remake. I just want to rewatch the original. <laughs> like until I until I can't watch it anymore. Like I don't I don't want to see it. there's so much content out there that the idea yeah. of like rewatching so I, like is way better to me than what than watching a remake. I don't know. That's my I mean, I don't mind opinion. necessarily adding to a story like yeah i when, love a sequel or a prequel like they've done well denis villeneuve like decades later did the sequel to blade runner yeah or like and something it was in the world yeah like arguably it being so far apart too arguably it was one of the best sequels i have ever seen in my life like it was so good and it matched up so well with the original blade runner and the reason it didn't do well is because people just couldn't be bothered to watch the original. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, it doesn't really make sense. We're missing some of the story. And it's like, it was marketed as a sequel, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so like even decades later, you can do a sequel or a continuation of the story in the same world. You don't necessarily have to go and redo Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. Yeah, no, I still anybody. have feelings about that. That's not, that doesn't exist in my mind. As Kathy is saying, Red Dawn, Footloose, Fame, love, just leave it alone. Love, leave it all alone. Love. Leave the exactly. 80s alone. Do not redo any yeah. of these. Yeah. Um, all right. I so heard a rumor that somebody wants to remake the never ending story. Mm -hmm. First of all, don't touch my childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. Okay, you just leave that in a box. That's in a box under our alone. Beds. Okay, <laughs> like, <laughs> d and there's no way they're gonna make it that dark. Yeah. So if you're not gonna traumatize at least two generations of children with this movie, don't do it. I fight. I fight <laughs> with Dane about this every so often. He's like, you know what, the kids haven't seen Never Ending Story, and I'm like, yeah, <gasps> for a reason. I, like we're just not gonna um no and also no can you just <laughs> Again, no you know what next time he brings it up just say a tray you mm. see mm -hmm. how he feels i can't even say that out loud see without like see if he moments. has a good day after you say that yeah. <laughs> and then and then lap we'll, we'll just lap back around to that at the end of the day <laughs> did you have a good day at work after i said a tray you no yeah. okay no? so do okay. you want the kids to watch it no <laughs> like, <laughs> They can figure out that trauma on their own when they're teenagers mm. and they start going through your DVD collection. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's so vintage. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, as Paul said, well, it's something that should be remain, <laughs> remain in plastic. That, that shit's wrapped up. We're just going to leave that alone. Guys, 
yeah. right. So, uh, so then which, which dance movie for next week? Which dance movie? If we're going to oh do God. dance movies. I, my vote would be Dirty Dancing, but that's because that's like I'm my like, ship. It's always going to be Dirty Dancing. It's always going to be Dirty Dancing. But then should we sandwich Footloose in the middle so we end on the highest of notes? No. Like, let's do Footloose. <laughs> because it's just not as good. And... And then it, end it. No, you just will. No, we just skip Footloose. Until we'll, skip circle, we'll circle back to that one. I mean, we'll it's cute. It's cute. Kevin Bacon, like, Kevin recreated Bacon is the great. scene on he is his adorable. TikTok now, I don't know which one of his kids is running his TikTok, but it's so cute. It's fantastic. Like, they live yeah. on, like, a hobby farm, and, and and in his barn, like, his kids, like... He has my future life. <laughs> just Like, like you know, not, like, not, put not. him out, and they're like, Dad, do that Footloose thing again and film. It was very cute. Yeah. Um. So, Footloose or Dirty Dancing? <gasps> Val's never seen Footloose. Kathy's voting for Flashdance. Oh, no. Now we have oh, to do all of them. Too. Do we Flashdance have to do all is of a them? good one. What a feeling. All right. Like, dun, so dun, dun, maybe dun, we dun. do. Maybe we do. <laughs> Footloose. If I sing terribly at you while you do it. Flashdance. <laughs> Flashdance next or Footloose next then? Okay. If we have to end on Dirty Dancing, then I guess we can. Flashdance. Okay, Flashdance flash it is. Flashdance it is. Yeah. Val, have you seen Flashdance? If not, you may have to catch up, <laughs> catch up with us. I'm sure you have nothing else going on. So, Okay, well, Paul says we should do Footloose, Flashdance, Dirty okay. Dancing. We're okay, going to... Re- we oh, we're we going to listen? That. Okay, we're going to listen to Paul. Okay, Footloose. Footloose next Paul's, week. Paul's reasonable. <laughs> okay, Val's already seen Flashdance. So Footloose next week, and then Flashdance... And then Dirty Dancing, and then Ruthless People. <laughs> Look at us. That's a month of stuff. A month of stuff. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it eventually. We'll change our minds next week, but it's fine. We'll, we'll just next keep week. talking about Ruthless People forever and never actually cover it. It's going to be the urban legend of our podcast. I mean, Gattaca's like that well. as well. We're like, we'll have Dane on and do Gattaca. And we're like, no. <laughs> we will not. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Little Shop of Horror. Stop, Kathy. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> It's, and we missed it because it was the eclipse. Steve Martin yeah. as the demented dentist is brilliant. Yeah, I've got to say we've uh, we've really done this show badly because every time that I'm on like any social media platform, they're like, "It's the 25th anniversary of XYZ movie," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, we should have oh, done, done that." That, <laughs> that would have really helped our numbers. There's a new. I sent Katie a TikTok of there's a new um, uh, Blue Corbin. What's his name from? High School Musical, High School yeah. Musical. Yeah, Blue. It's I think it's Corbin. It. Corbin Blue. It's Corbin Blue. It's the other Corbin end. Blue. Yeah. And uh, Jinx Monsoon, um, who's a famous drag queen. Mm-hmm. She, Anyways, she's in it. And she's like a phenomenal singer. She she's in came what? Off what is it? Little Shop of Horrors. I sent you a clip. I know. I don't watch those. I we sent you that. all the tips. I know. Oh, yeah. Them? Well, I watch the TikToks. Actually, I should take that back. I don't watch um, any kind of music video that Dane sends me, which oh, he knows yes, about well. this to be about me. So I thought you were implying that I, you sent me like a trailer or a music video in, in a different form. I than sent TikTok. you a clip of, yeah. of Corbin Blue um, talking about the eclipse and uh, don't go out because there might be some dangerous plants. Oh, my goodness. You know, so uh, we may have to watch a remake, which I just said I didn't want to watch, but this one sounds fun. My favorite um, Little Shop of Horrors is the Rick Moranis one because I just love him. Rick Moranis and Steve Martin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that that's my favorite one. Yeah. Um, that's the only one we'll cover. It's on I'm going to have to buy the soundtrack for that one, too, while I'm at it. So, yeah, we'll get we'll get there. We'll get. OK, well, that one goes after. OK, next week is Footloose. Let's agree on that. Everyone watch Footloose next week. Paul said that that's what we have to do. So we, we have gone off the Richter scale. <laughs> yeah. Nat is drinking uh, straight vodka. Uh, that's what no, Kathy told me earlier. Water. Moonshine. I am it's so moonshine. dehydrated. No. I mine this before the podcast, guys. It's half empty. It's more than half empty. So mine is is our new wine tumbler. So it obviously has prosecco in it. But I I'm I've been pretty good. I've I still have a decent amount left. You can't see it, but there's stuff there's stuff left in there. So I'm. Sure. <laughs> sure. There's stuff left in my glass. <laughs> sure, there's stuff left. There's stuff left. Oh. <laughs> Kathy's campaigning. All right, Kathy. Throw those on, we'll throw those on the list. We'll throw those on the list. Xanadu is wild. We're there. I need to... I, for sure, Katie hasn't seen Xanadu. No. I'm calling it now. There's no way. I have not way. seen Xanadu. I have not seen Xanadu. <laughs> it's Xanadu. so good. Oh, it's so good because it's so bad. Okay. I'm in. I'm I in for some... Xanadu. 
We gotta oh, get through man. a dance vibe first, though. I, I gotta get you started this, Kathy, and now I've got to get through some dance movies, and then I can circle next back. Week, Footloose. Footloose. For Footloose and Fancy Free next <laughs> week, and then yeah, who knows? I well, I, hopefully we'll stay to schedule. But thank you so much. The train scene. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just really all the Kevin Bacon. And John Lithgow not being like either Third Rock from the Sun or a crazy serial killer. So it's, it, we're in. We're in. Well, he is a psycho. He's a psycho. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We should we say. We don't know that he's a serial killer or anybody in this movie. It's true. We should <laughs> say. <just> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with us. If you want to find more of if we have not scared you away yet, you can hang out with us most Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern. We record these episodes live on YouTube. You can hang out in the live studio audience with the other incredible people. They'll make room for you. We'll, we'll save a seat for you. You can join us and give your ratings and let us know your movie thoughts and feelings. Uh, if you want to catch past episodes and catch up and see what we've reviewed and what we haven't, leave us voicemails, leave reviews shop our adorable merch hey this way merch <laughs> you can go over to the vhs club pod.com huge shout out to to juliet highland fables who designed the like the world's cutest possible tater for us so thank you so much for that um yes, she is shop and uh on an instagram uh, at Highland Fables, mm-hmm. and she does a uh, beautiful bespoke stage stationery. Yeah, she's yeah. incredible. I'm so, so <laughs> I'm something yeah. five. This morning. <laughs> such on a the- struggle. <laughs> wow. Oh, on that note, we we made Paul feel good, so we're winning. <laughs> we're winning, and Val's happy. That's all that matters. Can't we did Kathy some level of justice. She's still here, so we're good. I promise I'll see Zana do, and we will yeah. catch you all. And Kathy is great. It's magical. Katie is going to love it. I can't right. wait. <laughs> I am. I am absolutely in. So we'll catch you next week. Get ready for Footloose, and yeah, we'll see you. We'll see you on Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, everyone. Bye.